Welcome to the INTJ Equation. Today I'm going to review Neuroscience of Personality by Dr. Dario Nardi. Sorry for my absence, as I mentioned in some previous videos. Uh, my son's been having some major behavioral issues at school, so that's been tying me up with a lot of appointments and stuff and phone calls. I had to do this two weeks ago, but things kept coming up. So we'll go ahead and jump into the content. All right, the first chapter is called Let's Get Brain Savvy. <clears throat> Dario Nardi won a teaching award and purchased an EEG machine, which we did talk about in um, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. It's basically a machine that scans the activity in your brain, conducted brain scans on various types, MBTI types, that is, personality types. A neuroscience student felt their... They weren't as logical as their fellow students. I think there were an INFP. I'm not sure where I was going with that. Brain scans show that they didn't use as many logical parts in their brain. Not that they can't be more intelligent or smart. It's just they had feeling preferences rather than thinking preferences. And if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them eventually. When asked to answer questions about Economic scans show that economists have, and people with brain damage show similar results. Not that economists are brain damned, but hopefully they are, and we're not going to go into a giant global recession. So, And when asked about supporting a political candidate, emotional and reasoning centers only lit up for people who preferred a specific candidate, and math uh, lit up different areas depending on how they learned it. He does talk about a little bit later. Um, how different like civilizations like Japan learns it compared to France. So it's kind of interesting. All right, Maria, an INFP, precise and holistic when she listens and speaks. Ross, this is the first comparison, as an ESTP who's decisive, a deductive logic and expert classification. Maria relies on her deeply held values to make good decisions. A uh, good listener with a rich imagination, Rosh is tactical, uses gut feelings to solve problems. Not sure about Nario's statistics here, but he says INFPs are 1% and ESTPs are 13%. ESTP is probably pretty accurate, but the INFPs are not that rare. They're, they're fairly common. They're probably about 5 or 6% in my opinion. We don't know the true statistics because there's so much mistyping out there and we can't agree on one system. So, And let's not let that be MBTI, please. All right, so here's the neocortexes of both Maria, the INFP, and Ross, the ESTP. The neocortex is the outer layer, layer of the brain that looks like hamburger, basically, and these are the sections that light up, and we'll get more in detail on this as we go. All right, when is a flow state in the neocortex solid blue, and it varies by type when they're in this uh, flow state when the whole neocortex lights up? For INFPs like Maria, it's when she's doing active listening. And when it's for Ross, it's playing sports. Lights up when you're doing something that you're good at. But INTJs and INFJs are the exception, but stick around and we'll get to that. And here is a diagram. Um, the psyche in the middle is you and outputs her future and results and inputs her goals and ideas. And there's context, mine data processing, uh, neural regions and states, and culture. <clears throat> All right, this is chapter two, welcome to the lab. He just kind of introduces his uh, work area here. Here are some steps that Nario took in his experiments to focus on the person, let his behaviors dictate actions, open into tasks, spend significant time with the subjects, links to frameworks and more. Participants are all college age 18 to 25. He wanted to avoid somebody concerns about development because I noticed after 25, you know, people usually mature and chill out. Even people like inmates who are have antisocial personality disorder and who are unredeemable by society. So that's one weakness in this study. He doesn't get a very wide group of people, I think. I think having, you know, anywhere from like 18 to the 80 year olds would have been better, but I do see his concerns and maybe in the future, he does supposed to make a point 2.0 of this book eventually, but it's been a while since this one came out. I think it's like 2011. UCLA students that graduated at the top 1% of their class experiment probably would have been stronger with a more diverse group. 
They were all right-handed except one person. He wanted to see the differences. States right and left, 10 people have different brain structure. These students were free of drugs and alcohol except one that was on Prozac. He gave subjects 10 weeks to decide on their own type. I think that's problematic because, you know, we all know that some people just want to be a certain type and they believe that that type, even though all other evidence uh, says otherwise, he does a battery of tests and a battery to make sure that um, you know, people are accurately typed. I think he kind of coaches them into the right type. So uh, keep that in mind. We just talk about that a little bit later. Uh, there are most most of them were introverted. An EEG is electroencephalogram, like I said. An in, in, electroencephalogram, sorry, measures electrical activity in the neocortex, measures the changes in real time. Some of the tasks were to close their eyes and take deep breaths, stare at a point in the field outside the window, repeatedly draw a circle, repeat one word to themselves, sign their name in various ways, such as backwards and with their offhand tell stories with tarot cards, and much more. Once the task is complete, subjects are asked to recall what they experienced. Have subjects complete tasks in their uncertainty, bought strangers in rooms so you can see subjects get uncomfortable and you can see their brain waves change until they become more familiar with them. Some cases use a GSR, a galvanistic skin response, measures condu conductance in the skin. All right, rolling right through in chapter three, overview of the neocortex. <clears throat> the brain has two hemispheres, four lobes within each hemisphere. The book describes what is typical for right-handers. If left-handed, 50% it mirrors what's here. So pretty much what a right-hander's neocortex shows, the, it's going to be mirror opposite with a left-hander, or at least 50% of them. And the other 50% show unusual brain organization. The neocortex is the newest part of the brain that developed in human evolution for the process like decision making, sensory prospection, motor control, and more. The left hemisphere handles the right side of the body while the left hemisphere handles the right. So it's kind of backwards. So your left hand, your left side gets the right side of the body and vice versa. Uh, the left hemisphere is more verbal, linear, better with words, numbers, and reasoning. And the right side is more spatial, holistic, skilled at managing processes. Here's another diagram, FP1. These are the actual sections of the neocortex, which he gets his own names to make it even more confusing later on. More active when someone's giving an explanation. FP2 is dealing with novel information. F7 um, mirrors physical behaviors of others, so that could possibly link to SE, So I know SE users do like to mimic others. Uh, F3 solutions made through verbal or symbolic reasoning, possibly tied to intuition there. These are kind of fun to speculate. F4 defines ideas in a natural way. F8, the value is based on likes and dislikes. So it definitely sounds like FI there. F4 might be like TI or something. T3, analytical way towards language. T4, language based on tone and quality of manners of speech. Probably FE maybe. T5, act appropriate in social settings. That's probably FE. T6, focused on the future, what will happen. Definitely an intuition function some sort. C3, motion sensation of the right side of the body. C4 is motion sensation of the left side. Maybe those are SI. P3, visual kinesthetic data. That could be SE as well. P4, weighing pros and cons of risky factors. That might be TE. O1, images through the right eye. O2, images through the left. <clears throat> Brainwave frequency, how these are some definitions. Frequency, how often a brain waves come, amplitude, the size of the waves, uh, active regions, what the parts of the neocortex that light up, quiet regions not in use or not routinely used. Macro versus micro states. Micro states last a fraction of a second to a second. Two seconds to two to three minutes in the macro state. Sync macro states, all regions are at maximum amplitude and working together. This is what's known as a flow state, basically when the whole neocortex of the brain lights up when we're doing something familiar. Like I said, there's a caveat to INTJs and INFJs like there usually is. So we'll get to that. 
And if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Synchronous states, synchronous states, black limited frequency, uh, frequency and amplitude, meditation, watching TV, deep sleep. So these are different brain ways that he's going to talk about. Uh, blue delta awake and relax activities that have expertise in. So the blue flow state that he mentions, green theta, disassociation, deep focus, losing a game, dislike somebody. We talk a lot about disassociation in The Body Keeps the Score with Bessel van der Kolk. So go ahead and watch this if you're interested in these book reviews. I don't know if I'll be doing these uh, in the near future. I'll be switching jobs as well as similar hours and similar days. So I might actually have a little bit more time if I'm lucky. So maybe I will start them up again. Yellow Alpha Association. Basically, when you focus on bodily sensations, emotions, and stuff, what's pretty much is the opposite of dissociation, disassociation. Green, has, I mean, orange has never been observed. It's kind of odd. Red is beta waves, hyperstimulation, lots of lights and sounds, asynchronous states, mixed low tennis hop. That's a pattern that SE users typically use, a tennis hop pattern. Looks like black waves, but rapidly varies between colors. Mixed high a Christmas tree lights out of sync, constant change, which is what is pretty indicative of any users. Chapter four, cognitive skill sets. So these are basically all the functions, the sections of the neocortex that we discussed. He gives them all under his own name, which I think makes it a little more confusing. FP1, the chief judge, provide a reason to decide between options, detect error, less active for those who introspect. Most used region by most people, I guess, namely extroverts, because it's people who introspe introspect less. FP2 is a process manager, notices steps on a task, perceive when finished, brainstorming, consider a new unpleasant idea, use when putting yourself in someone else's shoes. F7, the imaginative mimic. Interfere based, infer based on context, imagine a place or time mirroring behaviors, what ifs, come home to mirror new ones, or home to mirror new ones. Underused, lack empathy, struggle. If they're underused, people in this section, they lack empathy and struggle to learn by imitation. Maybe something to do with psychopathy. It does kind of sound like an SE function as well. So maybe when it goes wrong, I know a lot of uh, SE users, they do kind of get an antisocial personality disorder. I have been looking in the school shooters and serial killers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so INTJ of me, right? And yeah, they are definitely the exceptions, which is very interesting. I hope to talk about more in the future. F8, the grounded believer, recalls details, strong emphasis on speech, identify belief, likes and dislikes. Imagine when you say what's important to important to oneself, underuse issues recalling details. So this definitely sounds kind of like what FI users would use. The deductive analyst, which is F3, logical deduction, correct one's own thinking, chain of reasoning, underused struggle with deductive reasoning. Not surprising, one of the most underused regions. I thought I actually proofread all these, but I guess I did it. <laughs> Probably something a high TI user here uses this section a lot. T3, the precise, precise speaker, definitely something I don't have much of. I guess I don't use that side of my neocortex much. Uh, speaking, making complex sentences, proper grammar, grammar, listening to others, handles words that are spoken and received by others. Before the intuitive listener notices tone of voice, hearing someone resonate with you. Basically, it's a bullshit detector. Speak with powerful impact. Underused miss tone of voice may miss key info. Kind of maybe INFJ-ish. C3, the factual storekeeper. How SI that sounds. Remembers facts, retrieves memories like dates and times, recall sequence, right side of the body. Study of the region limited due to no mobility. Oh, I guess a lot of things. Um, study new mobility. I forgot where he was going with that. I know a lot of stuff they can't replicate in labs because when you're tied to this EEG machine, you can't really do a lot of physical things where you have to move and walk around. So maybe that's where you're getting at. But I don't see remembering facts and stuff a limitation there. So I don't know. C4, the flowing artist. Remember a beautiful place. Retrieve memories that are pleasant. Recall whole body effect. 
affect body's left side, draw realistically underused poor artistic skills. So I would say SI, but kind of sounds ISFP-ish maybe. I know INFPs and ENFPs and all of them can be pretty artistic as well. The sense of mediator, notice input from others about your own social behavior, curious what someone thinks of you, adjust behavior, feel embarrassed. People who use this are highly sensitive. So we'll know what's going on there probably. T6, the purposeful, futurist, the word will, future tense, imagining oneself in a complex system, noticing patterns, envisioning the future, can explain insights, underuse, hoping, rather than predicting. So there's a lot of people that will hope for the future, and there's people like, you know, introverted intuitives who will kind of narrow possibilities and come up with the best possible future possibility. It's a very underused function is what he says, so... I guess that's something that INTJs and INFJs and high NI users possibly use. P3, the tactical navigator, identify tangible objects, visual and physical cues to move body, sense of self in the environment, good for tactical use in sports. Mediator, meditators can shut this section off when they're meditating. <clears throat> P4, the strategic gamer, weighing pros and cons, risk and reward, may evaluate many factors at once. Grapples high complex task. Many people underuse weighing odds and risks. Again, this does sound SE, but maybe when SE is troubled, I know a lot of people with antisocial personality disorder are very impulsive and don't think before they leap. So this could be a healthy SE function versus an unhealthy. So that's kind of interesting. I would like to study the neocortex activity and people who are traumatized and type. That'd be kind of interesting blending all those together, I think. O1, the visual engineer, reads charts and diagrams, visually disassemble an object, visually fit together objects, natural engineers and architects underuse. They struggle reading charts, so probably people with a low TE, TE in a shadow possibly, struggle with this. <clears throat> O2, the abstract impressionist. View of video, sense of shapes and colors, judge people by appearance, very visual, looks for themes under use, usually doesn't appreciate art. All right, chapter five, going into personality types. Here's a quote from Nardi. Similarly, you prefer some cognitive processes and you can just use your non-preferred hand. Just as you use your non-preferred hand, you can engage all eight cognitive processes at a different level of proficiency. So a lot of the skeptics of the eight function model, there you go. And another quote, for every pairing, there is an opposite. For example, NIFE opposes SETI. Young observed patients over many years, he proposed that during midlife in particular, people explore the opposite processes. More recent research, there are true opposite pairings. For example, the true opposite of F -I or NIFE is SITE, and the opposite is true for SETI and NEFI. These true opposites bedevil us, and they resemble a may represent long life cognitive deficiencies. Okay, and here is basically, he uses Linda Barron's um, temperament names to break apart the, the types. <clears throat> Again, I don't like people have to relabel these over and over. Improvisers are artisans, aka SPs, motivated, adapting to the moment. So these are ESFPs, ISFPs, ESTPs, ISTPs. Contributes by handling crises, uh, values being able to act without hindrance, gifted at accomplishing goals with what's present, learned by trial and error. <clears throat> Stabilizers, aka guardians and SJs, motivated by keeping traditions alive. Contribute continuation of day-to-day -day life, needs group participation and responsibility, talented at logistics and holding tradition, learned by memorization and practice. So these are the ESTJs, ISTJs, ESFJs, ISFJs. Theorists, rationals, NT, so INTJs, ENTJs, ENTPs, INTPs, motivated by knowledge, self-mastery, contribute by innovation, gifted with strategizing and analysis, long-term planning and goal setting, learned by integration and testing and thinking outside the box. Next are the catalyst, idealist, NFs, so INFPs, ENFPs, INFJs, ENFJs, motivated by authentic interaction, deep meaning, contribute by inspiring human potential, 
needs and values, having a sense of purpose and creating a better future. Talented at unifying people for social change. Learn by finding meaning in dynamic stories and themes. <clears throat> Chapter six, keys to the psyche. 58 patients were studied. This is kind of a breakdown of his uh, lab work here, his experiment. Tries to get an even number, number of types, but couldn't, obviously, because some types are more interested in typology than others. Engage with each patient several hours of various tasks. There are a lot of overlap bases of each type, but still people based on background and experience. So they're all college age, 18 to 25. Keep that in mind. All right-handed, except for one. And nobody was on drugs except one Prozac user. SC is kind of definitions of the functions here. Act quickly and smoothly to handle whatever comes up in a moment. SI, review and practice in order to specialize and meet group needs. NE, perceive and play with patterns with relationships across context. And I draw upon the whole brain to realize an answer to a novel problem. TE, manage resources efficiently to quickly decide based on the evidence. TI, reason multiple ways, objectively and accurately analyze problems. FE, evaluate and communicate values to enhance social relationships. FI, listen with your whole self to locate and support what's important. <clears throat> Extroverted sensation, get a little bit deeper. So these are ESFPs and ESTPs. When they have an EEG scan, they show a tennis hop pattern allows them to jump from one thing to another to respond to people of all types in this pattern while playing tactical games so one game he uses is mario kart when all the types uh play mario kart which is a tactical in the moment game they show a tennis hop pattern in their brain activity so it kind of mimics what high se users use se users go in their solid blue flow state when responding to crisis so basically uh yeah they're made to be first responders as i reiterated many times SC users are easily bored, not meant to sit behind the desk all day, respond to bodily sensations like outdoors and stimulations. And here are his uh, statistics, ESFPs and ESTPs approximately make up 13% of the population, which probably sounds about right. They're pretty common. Introverted sensation. SI brain activity varies based on experience and job training. So it's kind of like what their expertise is and basically in the zone and reviewing the past so their whole neocortex lights up when they are resorting to you know recall basically specialists and focus on skills they master learn by memorization repetition good at recalling useless data and remembering names and dates surprisingly high activity in t6 which is considering the future so i know si and ni they kind of have a lot of overlap and they can be confused with one another even though if you're an SI hero, you have NI demon and vice versa. ISTJ is 5% of the population and ISFJ is 5% of the population. I think that is totally wrong. They're probably some of the most common types there are. And these little boxes here are pretty much the what size of the brains that they use. So go ahead and pause it or rewind it if you need to look. So I'm just going to keep moving. Extroverted intuition, like as I mentioned before, they show a Christmas tree pattern when they light up. So they use all sorts of parts of the, the neocortex that doesn't really make any sense. They're kind of just bouncing around their neocortex in their brain. So it's kind of interesting because they're all over the place. Activity all over the place, even in areas uh, not applicable. So they might go to one part of the brain for solving a problem that doesn't even make sense to use. Fast creative responses, sometimes too creative. Creative hangovers, get burnt out, get off task, and contradict yourselves. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> it takes a lot longer to find a Zen state than other types, and they are easily easier imaginative, so they imagine things quite easily. ENTPs, ENFPs, ENTPs are 3%. ENFPs are 5%. That probably sounds about right from my estimations. And NI, introverted intuition. <clears throat> I think this is what's interesting about NI users. They use the whole neocortex when solving something unfamiliar. So basically other types, what they do, they're bread and butter. But what NI users are good at is solving unfamiliar progress or problems. So they get that, that flow state, that Zen state, where the whole neocortex lights up with blue waves when they're doing something that doesn't, they're not familiar with, trying to solve a problem basically. 
and it's used to realize something works best while focusing on one thing at a time. And when it's quiet, also in a flow state when envisioning the future. Strong visual thinkers benefit from physical or sensory focus. Um, strong metaphysical empathis. And INTJs, INFJs make up about 1% of the population. <clears throat> TE, extroverted thinking, efficient use of the brain, making decisions based off evidence. Most rely on the four regions of T3, O1, C3, FP1, measurable sensory into stimulated by goals and task completion. Prefer to direct others to accomplish their goals. Action before what if female TE types show more diverse brain activity. And ESTJs are about 18% and ENTJs are about 3%. Oh man, ESTJs are the most common type. Have mercy on us. Introverted thinking use four regions for logical thinking. F3, F4, P3, P4. Categories and defined concepts, weigh pros and cons and risks. Thought that was more of a TE thing, but maybe not. Decision making is deep and detached. Neocortex shuts out the motions to make decisions. FI demon basically. Least likely to listen to others. So ISTPs, INTPs, they kind of will just shut you out once their mind is made up. They can be insanely arrogant with their TI. INTJs, INFJs often get accused of the God complex, but yeah, I think everybody has it in some way or shot some way or form. And ISTPs are estimated to be 4%. INTPs are one. I think INTPs are probably a little bit more common than that. They're probably about the same. ISTPs and INTPs about three, four, five percent. <clears throat> extroverted feeling focused on social responsibility communication evaluate behaviors stimulated by sharing their thoughts ti inferior they love to you ever watch a neil degrasse tyson interview he's an enfj and he just loves blabbing about what he knows looking smart their brain prevents simple emotional responses in favor of more sophisticated responses it's kind of interesting because they kind of just act emotional in the moment it seems like to me Composed to anger helps others adjust to social feedback. ESFJs are more left-branded and ENFJs are more right. ESFJ is about 18% of the population. ENFJ is about five. I honestly haven't met too many ENFJs in a while. Maybe they're mistyped ESFJs perhaps, but I don't run into many ENFJs, so I think that might be a lower number. FI, introverted feeling, engage all regions when listening to others. ISFPs don't listen as long, but they're more likely to stop and take action. INFPs get the cores of people's psychology. ISFPs are intensive when people withhold information. Active in T3, T4, which handles language carefully, compose their speech. <clears throat> they do speak really slow. They are control focused uh, when it comes to interaction styles. So ISFPs are 4%. I don't agree with that at all. They're probably like, least 10, 15%. There's a lot of them. I work with a ton of ISFPs every job I go to. And INFPs are 1%. They're probably at least 5 or 6%, like I said before. Here's chapter 7. This is a case study on Natalie. There was only two ISTPs in the study, so he wanted to take a deeper look into them. Uh, his lab assistant was an ESTP. Kind of interesting, I think. And her, he had a, she had an INFP boyfriend, so an ES, ISTP and INFP couple. That's an interesting dynamic there. Normally had participants do 30 minutes of task, 30 minutes of social task, and 30 minutes of open ended task. But she spent more time with Natalie. Uh, Nardi spent more time with Natalie, I should say. Was able to show brain activity down through meditation. Slow it down. Let me take a little break here. First, Natalie signed her name normally, then did it with a non-dominant hand, then backwards. Inten intuitives use more brain power to sign name oddly in odd ways, and sensors not so much. Sensors became more natural to sign it in weird, different ways. When doing math problems, she did it slower. Introverts usually take more time. Natalie used more brain power to check her work rather than to do the problems themselves. <clears throat> TI heroes often shout, uh, shut down during active listening. So when they're listening to people, they just shut down and they come to their own conclusions. The same is true for Natalie. Nardi states that autism is linked with TI, or at least during a task where Natalie looked at pictures of men she would date. 
her brain didn't activate on who she liked, but rather their face is covered by glasses or hats. So that's something that was different between men and women, I guess. Uh, when men were hiding features with glasses or hats or stuff like that, that's when their activity kind of activated more and men were attracted more physically, physical attraction, I guess. And I already read a story about a kid killed by a drunk diver. M most types were bothered by this. Natalie shut up the emotional state. I feel nothing. I wasn't there. It's not related to me. Sounds kind of like FI demon. They're just able to detach and move on. Chapter eight, insights in action. This chapter doesn't seem to really fit the rest of the book. So it mostly talks about how to talk with other types. So I kind of glossed over it. Go ahead and go ahead and get this book on Amazon. It's definitely worth a read and buy it and support Dr. Nardi, of course. I think this just didn't fit. It didn't seem to me. So I want to move the chapter in 19th and in-depth exploration. Young states that I versus E was the most significant personality difference. I think sensing and intuition is. It just seems like that's where we're farthest apart in society. Dominant J versus P type. Typically use sides of the brain, left versus right. One took, one look took. That Nardi used to evaluate type is the ISCA, Interstrength Cognitive Assessment. Why did I use the ISCA instead of the five-factor model or the MBTI questionnaire? Young's underlying framework is not behavioral model with measurable static traits like the big five, nor is about preference dimension like the MBTI. Rather, the Jungian framework offers more expl explanatory power by proposing cognitive dynamics. These dynamics afford complex, flexible behaviors that vary by background and context with room for development. <clears throat> All right, so these are pretty much like who used uh, what function they used and how many people were used that lead function. So there's four SC users, eight SI DOMs, 10 any DOMs, eight any DOMs, and so on, and a number of support processes. So basically, this is a hero function or the dominant function. This is the auxiliary or the parent function. Graph of random, randomly selected people shows few similarities. And people came from type show 70 to 90% of brain activity. So basically if you share a type, you share about 70, 90% of the brain activity according to his study. Extroverts show more brain activity in the front half of the brain, introverts in the back, thinking and feeling DOMs show higher use in FP1 region, sensing and intuitive use SP, FP2 region. Sensors show more alpha waves and activity in the left side of the brain, opposite through for the introverted types. I probably meant, yeah, I probably meant intuitive types there. Thinkers show more black null band activity and more activity in C3 by feeler show more in C4. <clears throat> Another quote from Nardi, rarely a person shows a different pattern in narrow circumstances or when prompted in a specific way. For example, an ESTJ subject showed the active listening mode only to a 40 figures. Somewhat similarity, most people show a tennis hot pepper when they play tactical video games. This suggests that people can use all eight cognitive process in limited situations kind of silly to think that we only use four in my opinion so this is kind of a breakdown of uh how the functions kind of work when pause and read that i'm gonna go ahead and move on another quote we have a tie in our opposite type we tend to use brain regions that help us do some of what a person our opposite type does for example an isfp perverts introverted feeling in a lead role, an extroverted sensation in the support role. ISFP shows a listening mode in tennis hop. Home old sex. What the fuck did that come from? <laughs> Typical of these cognitive processors, besides regions that support is listening and such. ISFP also uses some regions such as typical INTJ, ENTJ, which prefers TE and NI. Overall, it is as if our opposite type is built into our type. So it pretty much supports the cognitive transition theory that we have multiple sides of the brain long before CSJ came up with it. So that's really interesting. I think this book was like 2010, 2011. These studies were conducted before that. 
Now, chapter 10, I think this is the last chapter, if I believe. Uh, now what about typing yourself and learning styles of type? Uh, I didn't go into this one much either. Kind of seemed to not really relate to the subject, but I guess that's the end of the slide. Uh, thank you for watching. Go ahead and like and share and subscribe if you like this. Let me know if you want more of these book reviews. They are very time consuming. Like I said, my son is having some behavioral issues and uh, I am switching jobs. So there's been a bit of slowdown. Uh, I'll go ahead and link the other playlists of other book reviews I've done here. Thank you for going on clickbait and have a great day.